Hey, welcome back to Phoenix Kitchen. Today we're making homemade Polska Kielbasa, a.k.a. Polish sausage. Let's find out how to do it. Here we go. Now, the first thing we need to know about sausages and kielbasas. Sausages are recorded in history all the way back to the 8th century B.C., but it was in the 1400s in Poland where the kielbasa as we know it today was invented. It was mainly a pork sausage as the king demanded that more hunting happen in the autumn to make more sausages for the winter months and it became very popular. Around the 1800s it moved out of Poland and became popular everywhere else as trading happened. Kielbasa nowadays is recognized by the Polish government to be an 80-20 blend of pork and beef. So we're going to do that blend of pork and beef, although we're only making a three pound batch, we're gonna be a little closer to 65-35 with two pounds of pork and one pound of beef. Okay, I'm getting my beef all cubed up and ready to go into the freezer. So it'll be nice and firm to get a good clean grind on it. Uh, the pork has already been cut up as we took that uh, from making some prior sausages. So we'll get this all trimmed up and then get our spices mixed. Now for a Polish sausage, the two major spice ingredients that are gonna set that flavor apart from other sausages that you have is heavy garlic and marjoram. If you're not familiar with marjoram, it's like a sweet oregano. As a matter of fact, if you don't have the marjoram on hand, you can substitute the oregano, but you're gonna want only about two thirds of the amount because the oregano is so much stronger. So we're gonna have the usual suspects, salt, pepper, that garlic we talked about, brown sugar, uh, the marjoram, and a little bit of allspice just to round things off. We'll get those all measured and mixed together and then grind our meat. All right, now that our meat is out of the freezer and it is solid but not frozen all the way, we want it to be pliable enough to make it through the chute and to be ground, but cold enough to keep that meat from emulsifying and getting tangled up around the blade. Get a good clean grind. We're using our medium die. We're not looking for a coarse grind on this, but we don't want it to be hot dog consistency either. Right, so we're just using our medium dye to get this through. We'll go ahead and get all of this meat ground up and then it's time to mix in our seasonings. All right, so here's what we look like. Nice clean grind. We're gonna add all of our seasonings and we're gonna mix those thoroughly for four or five minutes to make sure we're really coating everything. And we're, we're emulsifying the fat a little and bringing those proteins together so we'll have a nice tight sausage. One thing that you'll notice with this recipe, there is no binder and there's no additional moisture. Uh, traditional kielbasa does not call for it. I can tell you after making this and tasting it, one thing that I would consider is a little bit of extra moisture and probably just to make it really fun, that would come in the form of some sort of beer, right? Because beer and sausage really get worked well together. So we're gonna go ahead and get this all mixed up and then it'll be time to put it into our casings. All right, we're gonna get our meat loaded into the hopper and get our extruder set up. 
Then we're gonna load on our port casings. We're using 32 to 35 millimeter hog casings. They are currently soaking in lukewarm water. We want them to soak for about 20 minutes to become pliable. Then we're gonna open the tops and run a little water through each of the casings to get all of the salt out of the inside. And then we're gonna load everything on, tie it into a knot. We're gonna make sure that before we load it on, we do have our sausage coming to the tip of the tube. We wanna make sure that we're not pumping air into the casing just the meat. We'll get that tied off into a knot and ready to go and then we'll get these cased up. We're not going to case these as individual links. We're going to go ahead and make them more like a rope sausage uh, running at about 12 to 14 inches long and creating that loop as you would find them in the supermarket. All right, and here we can see this is what it looks like, that nice loop that we're looking for. And we wanna go ahead and make sure we get that onto a rack so that these can go into our fridge and set overnight to let those casings dry out. That way they will be nice and tight and they'll absorb the smoke a little more easily. All right, we're working with a very small coal bed today because we want to get these at a nice low, low temperature. We're going to cook these around 150, 200 degrees. We're smoking with pecan because pecan is absolutely the best flavor for sausages. They turn a nice, beautiful brown color. And once we've hit an internal temperature of 155 degrees, we're going to bring these things inside and get them into an ice bath to stop the cooking process. We don't want them to overcook. After we made our two full links, we ended up with one individual that was perfect size for using to probe our temperature so we don't mess up our whole sausages and for testing. We always want to test and make sure that these things are delicious and juicy like they should be. We've got nice color. You can see the little specks of pepper inside. That's always a great sign. So we're going to go ahead and cut into this thing and see exactly how we did. It's a nice snappy casing. You give it a little squeeze and there we go you can see the juices flow this is not a dry sausage which is amazing dry sausages are horrible this is meat and we want it to be delicious so we're going to take a test bite just to make sure you can see there all all of the flavor oh yeah it is absolutely amazing so we're going to go ahead and cook this up and see what we can do with it for dinner. My favorite way of handling Polish sausage, we cut the sausage, we're gonna brown it along with peppers and onions, and then we wanna bring in a starch. I like the little whole potatoes. We're gonna go ahead and throw those in with some olive oil, salt, pepper, garlic, get everything browned up very nicely, and then it's a meal all on one plate all those flavors come together in the peppers and the onions and the potatoes it is wonderful absolutely delicious we're giving away a five piece cast iron lodge cookware set when we hit 1000 subscribers all you have to do is like a video and subscribe to the channel to be entered in the giveaway